my name is hanumant rao i joined this uh, very recently very recently last uh, maybe uh, i can say maybe 10 days back i got the registration so this is my first cep into plant and machinery i did my mtech from kharagpur iit okay then worked in the bombay port for uh, 17 years then with from some private companies all port related works oh, last one and a half year i was uh, on uh, consultancies uh-huh. so i thought this is a new system i can take it up there was a recently uh-huh. a tender on nevashiva uh-huh. for uh, because their uh, what do you call their licensee is being changed so they wanted to have a valuation of all the things the land and building and plant and machinery before they can give it to the next licensee yeah and there are not many valuer that i know of of plant and machinery who are specialized in ports oh i am not so when it has come sir recently no it is not it has been awarded it came about 4 to 5 months back okay i i we came because of covid act even though i passed the exam in march due to this covid uncertainties and then sending printouts and all these things everything is stuck up yeah yeah and finally i could make it last week only yeah, i i was di- yeah. i was disqualified because they wanted three year experience yeah. and ibbi so i joined uh, uh, the valuation profession in 2018 only okay. so i was disqualified so thanks for that so let me look for that opportunity sometime because ports will always now Uh, for 15 20 years back they were given most of the on uh, good projects so the idea is correct that one by one we will come back to ports of okay. the private operators is it see we we and a group of us who work together our estimate is that the total valuation profession on a fee basis is close to 3500 crore per year oh. so the size of the profession the fee wise is very very large but the problem what comes in is that the larger projects as individual professionals it is very difficult for us to get such prof- uh, jobs is correct that's true then the reason why we are not able to get such jobs because what i have tried to communicate and talk to many people is what they say is first is you are alone and you will not be able to do the project in time number two you will not be able to put in that much of diligence and other thing as compared to what a team can do so these were the two things on which uh, we we have not been able to get large size projects but in practice the regulation itself is asking you to practice alone no, it is not asking no. you to come as a you can form a llp with other valuers that is the only solution if not with yellow you see what has happened now there are about 3780 or 3800 valuers total mm. ibbi yeah the overall profession the number of valuers in the country is close to 1 lakh uh, so obviously there is a demand or there is a requirement of a large number of valuers the ibbi it does provide for both the type of valuate professions either as individual or as what is called entity yeah, entity. entity entity can be a llp a partnership or a joint a public sector or a private sector and though of course there are uh, limitations on how the llp or the entity has to perform at this point of time if you look into again the data from ibbi all the four large uh, accounting firm have created their llps mm-hmm. as valuers and though they claim to do all the three type of valuation uh, but if you go more detail and check into the ministry of corporate affair website most of the people in there most or other i should say everybody in there is only uh, snf securities yes. security maximum, maximum is on security hold correct maximum is on securities uh also the whole in the whole profession the smallest number of uh, valuer is only plant and machinery which is even less than 10% about 370 odd valuers yes correct but uh, because of we are 370 i'm also plant and machinery I thought, <laughs> I, I, I thought as a plant and machinery, and the number of valuers being less, we can get a better fees. Yeah. But unfortunately, that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, because this becomes like uh, always. 
profession of mechanical and electrical engineer is always a subcontractor in the main contracts <laughs> Uh, so similarly, the valuation of plant and machinery is becoming part and parcel of small item in the major valuations most of the times. I don't know how and what. Let us see. Because yeah. even in chartered accountants, who are my friends who are running individual who are working in large companies, the people who are running alone, they also do not get large projects. They also land up getting a smaller company for audit or accounting or outsourcing. Mm -hmm rather than large projects. Any company which is more than 500, 700 crores, they eventually land up going into the top 20, 30 firms of chartered accounting. So, so the, uh, the way uh, this profession is working may be similar. Uh, we have 62 people so far in here, which includes me and Divya Jyoti people also. So let's wait for another few minutes and then we are going to start on. Yeah. Still five minutes is there for them to join. Yeah, yeah. But we can definitely share some more experiences from all over India. Sir, I'm DP Singh Vadwa from Jalandhar. Yes, sir. Uh, I did my MTech in structure engineering. Then uh, I was a superintendent engineer in local government. After a job of about 35 years, I have taken the voluntary retirement and then started this profession. Yes, I, sir. I cleared IBDI and now I'm a government approved valuer as well as a IBBI registered valuer. Oh, I, I have my own office near uh, bus stand in Jalandhar. Chale, sir, next time I'm in Jalandhar, we are definitely <laughs> going to come to you and have I, a... Always welcome, sir. <laughs> So, uh, but as for the business is concerned, uh, we are getting business from banks only. Correct. Uh, Land and building bank business is a substantial business. Yeah, that uh, is true. Uh, uh, as you have told earlier, there is much competition and there are so many constraints too. You can't act so independently without the influence of, uh, uh, by and large, we can say that there always remains the influence of officials, bank officials, uh -huh. directly or indirectly. Uh, uh, I want to shift uh, from bank business to IBBI, a company uh, a business uh, under a company act. So, but uh, there are no, uh, so far I have not got uh, any opportunity which is the source? Uh, so many values are not getting opportunity from IB uh, RP. Why? I don't know. Just last one year I'm waiting. Nobody has contacted me in, uh, for plant and machinery. I went also in land and building also. I am oh. both of them registered value. IB registered. So where are you based? I am based at Aurangabad in Maharashtra. Okay. I'm a so, mechanical. I'm with the other Luninker. Okay. Uh, and a master of valuation in real estate. Okay. So I got a registration in both the both uh, land yes. and and land and building. Yeah. But That's I didn't right. get any uh, assignment from the IBBI side. IB. Okay. Uh, what I would I suggest know. is it's okay. What I will suggest see Aurangabad is a is an industrial belt. But my suggestion yeah. is if you try to send mails to people in Mumbai, Pune, and the total Maharashtra, then you will get some inquiries. So, but uh, IP, IP, uh, yeah, to oh, IP. Not IP, yes, to IP. Okay. Uh, yeah, sir, yeah. at the initial stage when I got my registration in IBBI through IOV, ROVO, yes, that, please. At, at that stage, I was given an impression that I, our RVO, that is IOV RVO, IEVO, IOV RVF, will give a, uh, will send us emails of the certain RP persons. Uh, parties. But so far, there's no uh, any procedure. Sir, they, they will not do anything. I'm also oh, registered with IOV RVF. Okay. To even get a, a receipt from them is a very big headache. Very big headache. So, so I don't expect anything. 
That's but if you go to IBBI website, you can get a list of total Sorry. all the RVs which are there. Right, right. Sir, yes, sir. Can we send a mail to? Can we send a mail to uh, NCLT for uh, for getting any assignment? Sir, NCLT. Yeah, sir, sir. No. NCLT is no body to give you assignments. It's okay, even, sir. Even IBBI, Dr. Sabu, in several of the meetings we have had and open sessions, he said, no, they are not in the business of fixing the fees or getting assignments. Getting assignment is purely our job. Yes, sir. That, that I know it. But where to go get the, the email ID of the IPs? Okay. Email IP of the IPs we can see on the IBBI website, and I have written it. What we will do is uh, we will uh, I will show you where to get addresses of IP. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. You. Thank you. Okay. Actually, uh, it is already now late. So let me let me reintroduce myself, and then we can start. My name is S K Agarwal. <clears throat> I'm 63 years of age. I did my B Tech from IIT Kanpur in prehistoric areas. Prehistoric means very old time. Yeah. But if I have to apply again, I will never get qualified. And if I get qualified, I'll never be able to pass. So that's beside the point. Then I was in the corporate sector with companies like Larsen and Tubro, Maruti Udyog, General Motors, and so on. I've also worked internationally in, uh, in several uh, countries like uh, Africa, Japan, Germany, and so on. And in 2018, one of my friend who's an IP pushed me to become a valuer. So I'm a valuer also. Uh, Are you all awesome? Yes, sir. Uh, sure. uh, I am SP Sharma, the chairman of uh, DJF uh, RBO. Oh, so wonderful, I'm, sir. To start the proceedings. Uh, <laughs> you, you want to take some time, please? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, you have uh, already introduced yourself. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, respected uh, faculty, Sri Sushil Kumar Agarwal, esteemed uh, participants, in, uh, which include our members and members from other RBOs, and uh, representative from our uh, organization. I extend a warm welcome to all of you. The topic of uh, today's uh, CP is, uh, you already know, how to value inventory. So this is a very relevant uh, topic and chosen uh, on demand from quite a good number of our members. Uh, participants will stand to update themselves uh, with guidelines and procedure to be followed while conducting valuation of the stock. Uh, the faculty, the speaker today is a very outstanding, a learned and experienced uh, faculty. Uh, Mr. Agrawal, he has exposure uh, of um, both domestic as well as uh, uh, international. He uh, is uh, he and, uh, has a very uh, good uh, qualification and experience. He is having a diploma in management from Th Thunderbird USA. He is BTEC from IIT Kanpur. Uh, he is inter cost accountancy. And uh, he is uh, uh, having a exposure in the high speed, uh, high quality production techniques from IOTS Japan, project management from BII, strategic management for leaders from IIM Calcutta. He is a, he is a registered valuer and is a chart uh, engineer for in, India and Canada. He is on the board of IOTS uh, Alumni uh, Association Delhi and NPC approved. He is a NPC approved lean consultant. He has already spoken he has, uh, for over 40 years of experience uh, in manufacturing as, uh, and also as a businessman. And he is Proven turnaround expertise, which is more of uh, relevant in today's times. He has the experience of uh, working in uh, three continents uh, that is uh, Asia, Africa, and Europe. 
He has worked in Japan for eight years, Tanzania four years, and also in Germany. And uh, is uh, is uh, he has deal in supporting uh, and making joint ventures, uh, handled organizations over uh, three thousand employees. So he's quite experienced and uh, um, learned uh, personality. Who will be all uh, uh, very uh, would like to hear him, and uh, all members, uh, I all participant. I request that uh, uh, involve uh, fully in the discussion, raise questions, and uh, please uh, do not. Uh, in the past, we have learned, we have uh, seen that uh, uh, some people, some participant, they switch off the video. And uh, please uh, see that this uh, entire proceeding is recorded. And uh, uh, you may not, you may be, I mean, denied uh, CEP points if you, if you are continuously absent in video. So uh, once again, a warm welcome to all. And uh, now over to Mr. Agrawan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sharma. It's first time we are interacting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Chale, so let us start on. Shall we start? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let me first start with uh, where all valuation is required. You see, because uh, this is something which uh, gets uh, to everybody. Now, if we look into the total places where valuation is required, and all of this is coming out from the Ministry of Corporate Affairs guidelines, and there are several sections. If we have time in the end, we can go through the sections also. So for merger acquisition, demergers, we require valuation. For IPOs, we require valuation. For preferential QIP, IPP, we require. Conversion of securities, we require. Takeovers, capital reduction. Capital reduction means buyback of shares and things like that. Financing needs, corporate restructuring, tangible, intangible, IPR valuation, employee stock option plans, buyback, in the AS, Indian Accounting Standards, Companies Act, NCLT, we have said, various courts, they ask for valuations. Arbitration, SEBI. SEBI has very clear listing guidelines where valuations are a must. IBC, of course, we know the solutions where company has to be dissolved, dispute resolutions, equity research, surface, income tax, RBI, FEMA. Now, what basically I'm trying to project across is that the total valuation profession, if we look into it, it is much bigger than what is the business that we all are getting, though we are not getting as much of business as we should be. And there are various reasons for it, but please don't lose heart. Even Dr. Sabu has said several times that their estimate of the total valuers required in the country is over 2 lakh valuers. And at this moment, it is only 3,800 approximately. So any questions on this slide, and then we go to our actual inventory work. Now, most of these work, if you see, you get through company secretaries. They are the people who are managing all the company law affairs. And my, I have got much more jobs from company secretaries than from uh, IPs. Plus, the company secretary work is much better than IP payments. <clears throat> Any question on this or shall we proceed? Proceed. Okay. So now we will get into the inventory valuations. Uh, the way I like to work out is in case, see, I cannot see any if somebody raises a hand or types a question. So the best thing to do is just speak up. And if you don't have to speak up, then please mute your microphones because a lot of background noise tends to come and disturb everybody. 
Okay, so today we are going to work on this CEP point on inventory valuations. And as with everybody, I also have to do my CEP. So I may be a teacher here, but a student somewhere else. So we are all equal at this point of time. Now, this whole concept of getting into CEP has also come into lawyers. It has also come into doctors and it has also come into chartered accountant company secretaries. So any type of professional services where there is a government mandated, they all have to now undergo a certain continued education program. The number of hours may be different, but that is now a reality. It is also good to have those things because that keeps us abreast of what is going on. And number two, it also creates a fraternity among all the profession like we all are. So let's just start on inventory. Now, first is what is inventory? Now, inventory is where there is an input material, there is an under process material, and there is an output material, and there is an activity where the under process material take place. So an inventory is something which gets converted, modified, changed, repacked, processed, or whatever due to some activity. The activity may have an asset, may not have an asset, but there is a change which takes place. And this take, can take place in manufacturing, in construction, in distribution, or even in services. So an inventory per se is a change of material in some manner through an activity which can happen in anything. Now, what are the characteristics of inventory? The characteristics of inventory is first is it has a short life. Typically, except for inventories of dye and tool room, which can go up to 12 months, the inventory has a very short time. In a company like Bajaj Auto, from the time the material gets into the gate to the time a motorbike goes to the finished good yard is only three hours. So they are talking about three hours inventory. Maruti Udyog, they talk about six hours inventory. So, and <clears throat> tool rooms, especially large size dies, they talk about 12 month inventory. So characteristics of the inventory is it has a short life. The material will have to be processed. There is some material which has to be processed in some manner or another. Let's say an inventory of a pizza place. So you have the flour, then you make a dough out of it, you ferment it, you make a pizza, and then you give it for delivery. So the total process time there, or the conversion, or making it to something is only two days. So, you know, the material has to be processed, and then material move to the next stage. The raw materials which come may be generic or commodity, but though it is not sure. So the way inventory is defined in most of the term is a short material and it is for processing. Assets are where who process this material. So there is a difference between these two. Now, I have only, I have taken out figure of some of the companies of last balance sheets on what is the value of the inventory. Now, at one side, we have written a name of the companies. If you see, there is a huge variety of companies. This is a gross block. Now, gross block, as we know, is the total purchase of assets at the time and the value of purchase. And this is the current assets. Now, current assets typically means assets which have a duration of less than 12 months. And in most of these companies, these assets range are mostly inventory. There was no separate uh, uh, value for inventory written. So I've just written the current asset. Now, so if you look into Bajaj Auto with a gross block of 4,118 crore there in current assets is 4,818 crores. In LNT, it is 98,000 crores. In, even in a company like Hindustan Unilever, it is 12,000 crore against a gross block of 7,313 crore. Now, if we we'll go into shipping corporation, which is purely shipping industry, 
There you see the gross block is 15,200 crore, which are mostly ships, but the current assets are only 2,999 crores. Hindustan construction, another construction giant, the gross block is 524 crore because they don't have much machines, but they have current assets of 8,740 because most of the things they have is inventory. So if we look into the total thing, we see that the current assets, assuming this is 80% inventory, forms a very sizable chunk as compared to the gross block. So inventory becomes an important when we do valuation, especially in a running concern. Now in manufacturing, what happens? The material comes in the gate. The material then is goes into processing. It then gets into as a finished good, and then material comes under shipment to distributor or the customer. Okay, so in manufacturing, that is how the whole thing works. In construction, you get aggregates. Now, when I say aggregate, it means cement, steel, and other, uh, you know, those pebbles and sand and various things. You do the build, and then the build becomes the finished good. Construction can have two sides. You are a construction company or you can be a real estate builders. So in either case, there is an inventory. In a trading and distribution also, you can get goods, then you can store, you can repack, you can reduce the size from a pack of 144 to a pack of two, and then it is then distributed to retailer. So here also, there is a fast movement of goods from one point to another. In a distribution company, the company, like for example, the Coke distributors, the only asset they may have is trucks and the value they are distributing per day is a much, much larger value than the cost of those trucks. So still the inventory forms an important part in all of these things. Now here, there is no inventory in the following this is also very important. In any financial companies, there are no inventory. In mutual funds, insurance, bank, or leasing, they do not have an inventory because an inventory by definition, and as per Indian accounting standard, there has to be a goods. Goodwill is not inventory. Financial assets are not inventory. So all these financial companies have only financial assets or goodwill, which is not part of inventory. Another sectors which do not have an inventory are education sector, which can be coaching, school, universities, or recently by Jews and so on. The reason again is they have intellectual properties, yes, but they do not have inventories. And third is entertainment. Entertainment industry like TV, movies, they also don't have inventory. They either have assets, which are their sets, cameras, and so on, or they have, again, intellectual and creative property, but still they don't have inventory because there is nothing uh, physical in those. Another thing, livestock like animals, they are not counted as inventory, even as a traded good. So this is, again, as per Indian accounting standards. So there has to be some good, something material, which has to be processed and finished in a short period of time. Any questions so far, sir? Sir, in the previous slides, you have compared the gross block versus the uh, inventory amount. Uh, yes, in this. So here, the gross block is only of the plant in. OK, the gross block here is the total purchase value of plant and machinery, land and building together including anything construction and a gross block means the original value at which it was purchased or and installed so we can say the gross block is nothing but the capitalized amount of that particular company uh capitalized amount may also have intellectual property and and many things so the gross block is again a term by the accountant 
So that's why I'm using the gross block. So let us say Larson and Tubro purchased uh, a machine 30 years ago at one crore. So the gross block will still treat it as one crore. It will not depreciate or do anything. See, the reason of showing this slide was only one thing, that typically the assets and the inventory, they may have uh, the inventory also forms a larger part of the total company value. And hence, we cannot ignore it. We have to take care of it. That was the whole idea. And the reason, again, if you see, I've also put in Jubilee and Food, which is the Domino Pizza, as we all know, they also have current assets of 1076 crore against a gross block of 3600. So this also is about 30% of the total thing, which is huge numbers. Okay. Any other question, please? Go ahead, sir. No, sir. Okay. Let us proceed. If there is a question, please anytime ask me so that we can, you know, we, we can have a discussions uh, uh, as well. So we first treat in, for, we will first treat inventory in a growing, going concern case. Now a going concern means the firm is in operation and it is expected to be in operation for some time. As we know, there is a going concern and there is an insolvent. So we are only first talking about inventory in a going concern case. For insolvency, we'll take it later. Now here, there is very interesting. First, we issue a purchase order. Issuing a purchase order does not mean we have an inventory. It is just an order. Now, when the material is dispatched and the invoice from supplier is raised for domestic uh, dispatch of material typically is no inventory. But for international, if there is a letter of credit and the letter of credit is presented to the bank, then that comes under inventory under transit for us. Now here, one thing we have to be careful about, payment term has nothing to do with inventory. Material received is inventory, payment due is liability. So if you have got the material, it will come under inventory. And what payment has to be made will be formed as under liability. As far as inventory valuation is concerned, we are not bothered about whether it has been paid for or it has not been paid for. If the material is physically there or it has been physically accepted to be paid for, then it forms under liability. Now in domestic also, there is another very interesting case, uh, Bajaj Auto, uh, earlier, what they did was they filed, they told the suppliers to tell the some local transport agencies who will pick up their material and give it to Bajaj Auto. The reason why Bajaj Auto did that was they realized that they can save a sizable amount of money by negotiating a full one year contract with some transporters. In that case, as soon as the material gets loaded on a truck for which the payment is done by the customer or Bajaj Auto, it becomes the property of Bajaj Auto and it comes under inventory. So, but nowadays, most of the people say, no, we will only take material at site. Now here also, if the material has entered the gate, it will form part of the inventory and material which has been accepted will form part of the inventory. Now, why I have written like this, in most of the manufacturing company, there are several steps. First is the material is received. Once the material is received, it is counted. Then it is inspected. And after inspection, it, they will punch it where it will form inventory. However, on the extreme legal side, if the material has come under the gate, it will still be treated as inventory, though you can say inventory inside the factory, not in balance sheet. Now there is some examples, which let me give. Uh, Walmart, now Walmart, they are supplying more than 150 container per day from India to US, even under COVID. 
So what the contract they have done for handicrafts and various things is, they once the whole goods are ready, they have to be inspected at the supplier site. Their third party inspector, which goes there, they do the inspection, they sign it off. After they sign it off, then the invoice is raised. The invoice copy is uploaded at Walmart uh, website. And then Walmart sends a container at predetermined time to the <clears throat> supplier warehouse. Now the loading of the container takes place by the supplier. And as soon as the loading takes place and it is signed and it is sealed, that whole property becomes the property of Walmart because from that point onwards up to the point where it is distributed in US or any other place of Walmart, it is the Walmart's property. Now, in all of in these cases, Walmart typically pays 90 days after the ship has sailed from India. So let us take a case here, Muradabad, from a container gets loaded in some handicraft maker in Muradabad. Now from there, it will go to the Muradabad ICD, which is one day. From Muradabad ICD, it will either go to Bombay or to Mundra, which is another about seven days. And then from there, another about four to five days. So altogether, it takes 15 days for the ship to sail. So the credit terms with Walmart gets is 90 plus those 15, 105 days from the date the material is dispatched from the supplier warehouse. And interestingly, Walmart says, if you don't trust us, we are fine, we won't do business. So there is an absolutely open, unsecured credit, no LC, nothing. But that is the way Walmart works and people are dying to do business with Walmart because one Walmart means you know, uh, Walmart or Ikea, they can give you thousand career of business per year, just one company. So, but here it is very clear, as soon as the container is loaded, the finished good becomes inventory of Walmart and not of the supplier. Another case is where we have imported material. Uh, let me give you two or three examples of imported material. Uh, I do some business consulting on the, on the other side also. So one of my client is a lead reprocessor. So they buy material from uh, Dubai and from Africa. And <clears throat> the way they buy is two ways. One is either through LC or a second is through what is called is DP. DP means presentation of documents. So there the material is or the raw lead or lead batteries or whatever it is loaded on the container and it is dispatched. Now, of course, when it is being imported, there are uh, insurances and all other type of things, which is very much there. But the people, they immediately present the uh, bill of lading and all the things to the bank. And then the bank, uh, you know, as soon as it presents to the bank and the bank accepts it, transfer of inventory takes place and that inventory comes in the books of the importer. Of course, they don't pay up to 90 days or even more depending on the terms, but the inventory comes in as transit inventory, inward transit inventory. Now, from Dubai typically to the factory for these lead people, uh, Dubai to Mundra takes about 10 days and then from Mundra to Delhi takes another about 10 days and another about six days. So it takes about one month from Dubai for the material to reach their factory. But that whole thing comes under inventory, it comes under contingent liabilities. The third case is where supplying to Indian customers, where nowadays most of the Indian customers says is you deliver us at site. Uh, and because they don't want to get into logistics, even knowing very well that logistics uh, on, a, on a large scale may be cheaper to them, but they don't want to get into. So in that case, only when the material reaches the site, it comes under inventory and not before that. So, you know, these are three or four different cases where what material will come under inventory and what will not come under inventory. Any questions on this, sir?
So can we say that the, once the ownership is actually transferred, then only it becomes an inventory? Sorry? One word, one, only when the ownership is transferred. Yes. Then the inventory no. comes. Because someone substance, what I could understand from the last three, four slides is that when material is shipped on board or whether material reached a site, irrespective of the payment part. Correct. You are absolutely correct. It becomes inventory, correct? You are absolutely correct. It is uh, only when the ownership is transferred. And what I'm trying to explain in this particular slide is that the ownership transfer can take place in a different manner, no, whereas yes, no. the payment terms can take place on a different manner. Yes, correct. That I agree. Uh, a very interesting case, another one is cement factories. Now, the cement factories, the whole CLIM, they have bearings. Now, these bearings are typically 30 lakhs to 50 lakh rupees. And a person has to order the bearing two years in advance. There are just three or four companies in the world, NSK in Japan, SKF in Sweden, FAG in Germany, who make these bearings. And they take 100% advance. And they say, if you don't want to pay, we are fine. And two years in advance. So the money which has been given to these companies will not form inventory. They will form in the books of account as advance to supplier only when the material comes in our premises. And in this case, the bearing maker takes the responsibility of fitting it also, because they are afraid that if the bearing is not fitted properly, it may break. And these are high cost. And another big problem is it takes a long time to make it. So there, you know, there are different conditions. So transfer of ownership, at what point it gets transferred, it forms part of inventory. Any questions, more questions, sir? Sir, I'm unable to see the chat. So if there is a question, please speak up. No, it's okay, sir. We can just uh, go ahead. Okay. Now, another thing is there has to be processing of material. The material has to be processed. It can be converted. It can be assembled. It can be changed to make a saleable products. It can also be used to do construction or it can be repacked for redistributions. So repacked for redistribution means when the material may come in very huge quantities and then it is repacked into smaller uh, packets. A very interesting example for repack uh, is that the paper we get, that A4 size, et cetera, a lot of that paper is imported and that imported material, it comes in very large size rolls. And these rolls are approximately four to six tons. And then there are third parties which are slitting this paper, making it into A4, repacking and selling it. So that is repacking and redistribution. And materials are then issued in the shop floor or processing on the site. Processing on the site we see, especially on the construction, or even in the machine side, when a particular machine, which is so large that it cannot be manufactured, or if it can be manufactured on the shop floor, transferring the, the whole machine at the site becomes a big problem. I was watching a, a, a movie on, I think, Discovery or National Geographic, one of the two where Dubai had ordered a very major ship for dredging their harbor. So what they said was, first you have to assemble the whole ship in US where the supplier was. You have to test it. And only when it is working for X number of hours, you have to then disassemble it, bring it to Dubai and reassemble it. So this is the way the whole order was given and this is the way it was processed. Okay, after we issue the material, then the value addition takes place and then it comes into as what is called as work in progress. Now in work in progress, you can have processes, process 10, 20, 30, 40. Now, uh, we all know, especially in manufacturing, what these processes are, this is the way it can be defined. It can be defined in any other way, but this is one way. Or in construction, we can say uh, creating the uh, RMC, 
or the uh, mixing of the concrete, pouring of the concrete and so on. So the work in progress is when we define certain processes, we define it. And with each process, there is a value addition which takes place. So to value WIP in manufacturing is we take inventory at each level, we put the value add at each level. And this is till the way the product is finished. I will also give some examples with numbers on this also. So it becomes clear and we can have a little discussion. There is another alternate way that is we took, take the total material which is issued and presently in shop flow. We take what is a total value addition in the, from the time it is issued to the time of the finished product. And then we say, okay, the whole material is finished to half size and that is the WIP, which is also a pretty fair method and it is also an accepted method. So each of the two methods can be taken. So in WIP construction material as material inventory, but once it is constructed, the cost of land is to be added proportionately. Now here it's very interesting. Uh, this again, I was talking to my architect friends who said as soon as the roof is put onto a certain construction, then the cost of flat land proportion to that particular square foot area can be taken as WIP inventory. So this is uh, in construction. Whereas in trading and distribution, there is no change of material uh, distribution. So there is no WIP. There is no work in progress. Either you have a raw material or you have an input material and then you distribute it. Now, how do we calculate WIP? In WIP, if you look into it, there are direct costs which are labor power machine. Then there are indirect costs which I have put in overheads. There are rejections and some other costs. So you can have a process number 10, 20, 30, 40. And these are some hypothetical figures which I have put on as a cost. So in process term, the quantity, let us say, was 80. The cost was 217, which is 100 plus 75 plus 20 plus 18 minus 2 and plus 6. So it is 217. So the inventory cost is 80, which was a quantity up to process 10 into 217, which is 17,360. This is the process cost. So on this, we will have to add the material cost up to that point. Now, if we take process 20 and the quantity here is 40, cost is 97. So the total inventory is 3,880, which is the process cost. But the process cost up to 40 will be the process cost of 380 plus the processing cost for process 10, which is 217 into 40. So that will become the total cost of WIP after process 20. And this is the way the WIP inventory can be calculated. And in large organization, usually they have all these process costs ready. So it becomes much easier in case we have to do the valuation of the inventory, which are under WIP. Any mm -hmm. question? Any okay. questions here, sir? Huh. sir? Here one equation is that you told that this is only the process cost. So yes. The material cost that we have to add to? Yes, uh, material cost has to be added. Okay, so material cost is uh, whatever uh, they have purchased, exactly that amount we have to Yes, pay. yes. So, the, here is the correct. equation. I'm giving an hypothetical example. Uh, there is a one seat is there, right? And in process number 10, this seat is divided into two parts. Correct. So, shall we have to uh, take the, the purchase cost accordingly the size of that material? Yes. Of course. Yes. yes. Correct. So we Correct. do not have to blindly take the yeah we do not have to blindly take the purchase cost of that particular sheet for the process number ten. Correct. Only the size of the sheet which is taken into account for this process that cost has to be added. It is in proportionate way. If I'm right, please. Absolutely correct, sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. It's clear now. Sir, it is a cumulative total, sir. Process 10, 20, 30, 40, it is cumulative total now? Correct. It will be cumulative because process 20 comes after process 10. So in process 20, okay. uh, just a minute. So in process 20, what will happen is, what has happened? 
let me let me show it here so process 20 means that process 10 is over yeah so process 20 cost will be process 20 cost plus plus 10 plus process 10 cost Correct. Right. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. See yeah. what what yeah. I can see from uh, from the screen. Uh, in process ten, quantity is eighty, yes. and we have entirely completed that process. On pro no, uh, we don't 10. know. We don't know. It is see this particular production is running. So yeah. let us say. Uh, it is a two shift operation. The factory starts at eight o'clock and this right. is the condition at eight o'clock in the morning. Right. So right. immediately after that, the process will start. So eight okay. o'clock in the morning, there was pro in process 10, 80 was completed. Okay. In process 240 was completed. Right. Now we don't know the speed of working because that is not important in uh, inventory. So okay. I have not mentioned anything in this. Okay. So, so as we all know that uh, valuation is a snapshot. It is a snapshot in a particular time. It is not a dynamic thing. Right. There is a possibility also that the process 10 and 20 is uh, totally independent. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that is what I have assumed here. Okay. Uh, that is not a continuous process. That is my question also. It is not a constant continuous uh, process. This quantity 80, which has been used for uh, this process 10, Further value addition on uh, on 40 quantity out of this 80 quantity is it taking place or entirely new process of 40 on 40 20? No, uh, no, no, I have assumed I have assumed that 20 follows 10, so the quantity of 40 has already completed 10. Okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. 80 is independent. 80, 80 is waiting for uh, 20. Correct. 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 80 is waiting for pro, uh, this process 20. Correct. Okay. I have a question. During the uh, pre-COVID situation, we used to allocate overheads on the basis of the normal production capacity of the machinery. But post-COVID, there are very high chances that the machinery does not work to its optimum uh, expectation. So in such a situation, how do we allocate overheads during COVID? Ah, uh, you have to check the production. Uh, production. You see, you see, the question that you are putting on is has to be then again worked out in a little more detail. Normally, when we get assignments, now on the practical side, when we get assignment, we are unable to work in all the details which I have shown you here. So what the way I normally do is I take how much material has been issued and how much of inventory or the total material is lying between point of issue and the point of finish code. And then I take the finish code inventory, which is much easier. And I take the raw material, which is also much easier. And whatever is the value addition, I take the total and take half of it. So I assume that the, word, the total material is distributed equally on all the processes and half of it is finished, half of it is in raw material stage. But otherwise, this sort of calculation is done by the larger companies and especially companies which are keeping a very close tab on each of the process costs. I know for sure, I have worked in Maruti. In Maruti, we had a very, very close tab on, on situation like this where in the assembly line, let us say there are 300 people. So every person's value addition was also monitored. But again, it is not necessarily done in all the companies. So, but this is the way, the way it, has, it should be done. And the overheads again, some companies, they, they do a dynamic overhead accounting where all the fixed costs related to manufacturing or direct is put on to that. And some companies, they do a quarterly overhead allocation. 
so it will purely depend on that situation that what is the way that company is doing but at the same time uh, if i am not mistaken mr agrawal you said mr agrawal you said that in maruti yes please can you please unmute as he you told that in maruti from the stage of raw material to finished good your time period was only 6 hours in bajaj you were talking about some 3 hours so yes. the time period is too less so i agree with you that you can take 50% at any stage raw material finished good and in between you can take 50% because time okay. period is low so I, i agree with you this is what i wanted to say yeah yeah no even you see even if you take a, a situation of dye manufacturing yeah now a dye manufacturing uh, in india a typical dye if you place an order it takes 3 months okay and large size dye 5 ton dye or 8 ton dye it may take even up to 1 uh, year so what happens because there is a flow of material which is taking place so it is in material whatever that time period it it is the flow which should keep on taking place that is why we said it is a growing going concern the concern is working and it will keep on working till the time last of the material gets converted i agree and if you do mathematically any manner the in the cost of inventory in work in progress will not change much whether you take it as a half value or whether you do the costing in this particular way see the reason why maruti or bajaj or they do costing in this particular way because there is a specific focus on reducing cost at each level so you know the how to do automation how to do like this and the reason again is maruti producing about 1.6 lakh cars per uh, per month or let us say hero group producing 6 lakh car 6 lakh motorcycles per month for them one rupee saving in one operation is huge saving 6 lakh rupees saving per month so that is why uh, they go into more and more details right right okay shall we proceed sir one question is that in practically uh, if we are uh, taking this kind of the valuation assignment Uh, shall we have to take the inventory or we have to verify the inventory no no you will not have to go and do the inventory it is impossible yeah see it is impossible for you to do inventory for a company like maruti the uh, the total inventory okay it 14000 people work to take inventory on 6 hours so you as a single person or your team of people are impossible you cannot take inventory so the way to take inventory is you have to check the computer data and you have to believe in the computer data and at a later date i am going to put the kvats also when we do this valuation where we have to mention this so similar way the all the cost is also be taken from the particular client only yes all the cost you can't how can you see yeah. the reason the reason why i say i do it on the half way because i know the sale price of the finished good i know the dealer commission so i know the ex factory cost of this finished good i also know the cost of raw material so those are two things which are certain for which there are government you know they are filing gst they are doing so many things in between what they are doing and how they say that operation 1 is 10 rupee operation 2 is 30 rupee i cannot do a verification the no, no, the next question is mine is that if the all the details are taken from the client then what are the value additions from the valuer the value addition from valuer at this point of time is only creating a nice report which is required mandatory beyond that nothing more <laughs> okay <laughs> so now i have asked this question to understand what should be the our fees nothing else <laughs> sir i did a valuation for national panasonic which is a factory near gurgaon okay. their total gross block was 450 crore their and the gross block means the whole plant setup everything was 450 crore the land was under lease so it doesn't come into picture out of 450 crore 430 crore was plant and machinery and very interesting on that 
the total depreciated value they had shown in the book was 108 crores now the dies they have depreciated in 3 years and made a value of zero and they were using the die to do manufacturing of refrigerators and and other products so when they called me for valuation i asked them why do you need valuation of course as we all know so they said this is for internal purpose now they were not able to specify internal purpose i also wanted an assignment so i said fine so when i raised this question to their cfo that how can you put a book value or the present value for a particular die is zero when you are using the die and you have allowed me to take a picture of using the die so this is a wrong now he kept his mouth shut then he said this is the way they do in japan i said fine which is okay but this national panasonic private limited is a company in india yes it is following all the laws of india they said yes only the equity or the investment is coming from japan which is fine but the loans are also from india he said yes so now how can you tell me that on the land of india for an indian company is following laws of india you can follow a law of japan in one particular case so he was not able to answer and i told him i said i am not going to put the value that you are saying even if you say that the value of that particular die is is zero because then i would assume that die doesn't exist in your plant if the die is existing and you are not manufacturing you still have to put a scrap value at 20 rupee per kg for the cost of for the weight of the die finally i had given a valuation of 240 crores which we had a discussion and they accepted they said okay our 240 looks high can you make it 235 crores so 240 and 235 is hardly makes a difference so so you know that is how there also the inventory it was impossible to check the inventory because the processes are larger some processes have very high value what i said is okay what is your total fin- uh, finished good stock what is your total bill of material cost i took the two and take it take the half way and signature and given it so there it, it is more what did i do i didn't do anything great about it i just uh, you know they need a paper signed by a valuer so now ketan's uh, question was uh, what was the fee <laughs> my my fee for doing this was 32000 rupees <laughs> okay that, uh, great <laughs> okay how much, how, how much hours you have already uh, uh, put in this particular revenue? okay i okay that is that is a fair question i had put in including discussions and everything including my whatever you can say six working out days mm-hmm. or 48 hours okay and the good thing was it was during covid time so i was sitting purely idle and the factory was just about 20 km from where i am so i was also wanted to go out and meet some people <laughs> plus of course it looks nice on my resume national penna sone or something so so beyond that nothing more thank you sir okay okay shall okay. we continue yeah sure please okay finish inventory as finished good when material is ready for sale it is finished goods and the valuation of finished good in manufacturing has to be sale price less profit less logistics now these are again very standard method of doing it now here there is a profit included in this which is part of the inventory which is fine which is as which is correct now value of finished good in construction is again sale price less profit here there is a very interesting case that let us say it is a real estate company which is selling full constructed real estate whether it is commercial or it is uh, residential so there is a proportion of land also in this which is part of the finished good inventory and it is taken as correct and here also so that is again correct so we the construction cost may be only let us say 1000 1200 rupees a square feet whereas the cost of the sale price may be 5000 rupees or even if it is a bombay maybe 35 40000 or maybe 1 lakh rupees per square feet but the inventory is taken at the sale price less profits and valuation in trading here is trading seen as sale price and as sale price to minus commission to retailers 
very simple way. Now here, there are different ways of doing inventory. One is called the first in first out method. Here it is assumed that the material that has come first will be used as first and the value is calculated in the reverse order. Now here, let me give you an example because writing an example, example makes things easier, at least for me. Let us say we have received material on these states, the quantity received are 1,000, 1,200, 500, and the rate at which we received is different. These are simple example. Now at the time, we, we are told that the material available is 2,100, whereas we have received is 2,700. Now, when we take in at first in, first out, for doing inventory, we calculate in the reverse manner. So in the reverse manner, we assume that 500 which is came at 140 is still available in the store. Then we say, yes, it is still not completing 2100. So 1200 at 130, that is also available in the store. So it is out of 1600 has been used and only 400 is left which is in the store. So we calculate first in first out method and the inventory comes in this man. The good part in calculating this inventory is whether you use SAP or Tally or Busy or X or any other software, you just, you just have to go there and look into the inventory valuation method. And with that valuation, the software automatically gives you the inventory value. So you don't have to physically do this calculation. The software itself does it and gives it to you, provided that inventory is genuine. Okay, the reason I use this word provided the inventory is genuine, I also know of certain companies. There was one company which was a supplier to uh, Kelvinator and now Whirlpool. Now, this supplier had a turnover of about 80 crores and he had shown false inventory of about 18 to 20 crores and that 20 crore he had taken from the bank and then he was giving it to construction company at 2.5% per month. So his, he says his job as a, as a uh, sahu car, as we call it, or as a lender, gives him more profit than his business with Whirlpool. So I'm assuming this is genuine data. So this is a first in first out method. I don't think there should be a question. We, all the people here are experienced. The another one is a last in first out method, in which case what we do is, we assume that the material which has come the last has been used the first. So in which case, this is the way the valuation will take place. We take 500 has been consumed. First, we start with the first material which has come and we keep taking till it is consumed. So the last material is consumed first and the earlier material is used later. And the third method is the weighted average method on which what we do, all the three material, we take as a total cost of this. So the total cost of this, we do 1,000 into 120 plus 1,200 into 130 and 500 into 140. We divide it by the total material which is received. So the total cost becomes 128.15 and the value for 2,100 inventory becomes 2,100 into 128.15. Uh, so this is the weighted average method. Now, any questions on any of the three methods? Uh, here, uh, one question is that uh, if that particular inventory has a certain life, then uh, what we have to consider? See, if the inventory has a certain life, that and the life is over, then mm -hmm. that invent that value of that cannot be taken as a purchase price or a fair market price. Mm -hmm. It has to be taken as a disposal value price. I have also put these on the later slides with your questions. And here again, depending on the type of material it is, you may even have to pay to dispose it off. Fine. But if that it is not uh, completed in life, but it is a partially completed in life. Yeah, then you take it in the same, same manner. Same if the, if, same yeah, yeah. Same in case the shelf life is not over, 
hmm. or the expiry date is not over then it continues like this could you please go to the previous to previous slide the logistic cost was there the logistic cost was there just a minute padha ho gaya de di ji padhi gala gaon you are talking about which slide this one this one okay ha uh, here you have written that the valuation of the fg in manufacturing sales price less profit less logistic but in many places there are uh, uh, two uh, plants are there of the same company so they have to use the logistic services from one to another place now this all of that is it part of finished good or is it part of work in progress it is in work in progress the finished good will be after that yeah so in work in progress the way we have done the calculations earlier mm -hmm. we we do does the, the other cost of other we can okay. put cost of logistics here okay fine and in the case of the finished goods uh, uh, sorry in the case of uh, making the price sales price or the maybe we can say mrp they are also including the promotional cost yeah all of this i have assumed promotional costs are not in there this we have to mention in the kv acts okay. once i come to that kv act section you will see all of that is included discounts and all of those things Hmm. is included in that yeah discounts advances are there everything. discount and and special commission hmm. taking all the dealers to singapore sales promotion all of that actually comes the sales overhead so, so in certain cases the stock is also held in trust correct hmm. another very interesting case here is where uh, the party which is manufacturing they have nothing to do but they immediately give it to a third party for example coca cola a coca cola has got their own bottling plant and they have bottling plant which are done by third parties but the price which the third party pays is the same as decided by coca cola and coca cola charges certain royalty to them for doing all of it so that royalty comes as a different uh, way altogether Okay. Any other questions? Uh, in uh, sir, in the uh, three methods, uh, in the first method, you have uh, given example of uh, of the construction case. Please uh, repeat that, and also the second case was not uh, uh, heard due to some internet uh, problems. Repeat that. Okay. What you are talking about is uh, inventory. Uh, in in inventory first method. you have given okay. an example of construction okay no here i have not given any uh, see the three methods of valuation of inventory is fifo first in first out right the second is lifo last in first out and the third is weighted average mm -hmm. now this method is used in material of the type of processing which is done whether it is manufacturing construction trading or anything so in the first in first out you assume the material which has come in the warehouse that is first material is consumed on the first way so this is the way we do the calculations in the second it comes out as the material which has come last is being used first and we use the first material in the last may so last in first out and in the weighted average whatever inventory we have we are using we take the weighted average of all that thing and then whatever is consumed we use in that material <clears throat> okay. now the good thing about all the three is all the three methods are available for inventory valuation in all the software so whether it is tally busy sap or any other uh, erp or mini accounting method they have all the three methods which are available so just by clicking at that uh, right uh, uh, button then we can get the valuation immediately at a particular date so it is very Imagine. easy once the companies are doing valuation but this is the basic fundamental on which the valuation is done 
So the method that we adopt for evaluation, any one out of these three, should be in sync with what the respective company is following for their uh, company's uh, act, right? Because accounting standards also talk about the various methods wherein uh, LIFO is specifically not allowed. So do we also have to fall in sync with what the company is following as a policy? Or how, how no, do you, you don't have to fall in sync with what is following in the company. That is why an independent valuer is there. Okay. However, whatever you follow should have a logic. Okay. okay. The, the, if, you, if you are unable to decide, then the best method to follow is the weighted average method. Okay. Weight, weight, weighted average means the quantum supplied uh, over a period of time. Yeah, Even you one can piece see. is left over, correct? You see, you see whatever no, here, here it is, it is the same thing. It is the same thing. So it, that, there may be some supply in December. There may be some supply in December also because it's a yeah, continuous process. Correct. Now, what so see, take that's not a, that's, see, it is impossible to take all each and every material in that. It is impossible. And typically, yeah. if you see whether it is a chemical, whether it is construction or it is manufacturing, very few companies are actually able to follow the first in first out method. Normally, you know, there is a, let us say, there is a cement bin, the cement silo. So the material will come, they will put it from the top and the material they take out will not be from the bottom. It will be from somewhere center. So there will always be some dead stock which will be there. Similarly, if you see in the in manufacturing, whatever material comes, it will come on the top and the top material will be taken out first. But for valuation purpose, the way to value, you see it is impossible to identify which material has come when, unless there is a traceability requirement which is legal, then it's a different matter. But like, the like, like in pharma industry. Like in pharma. I was just going to mention like in pharma industry. Okay. But otherwise, the safest method to follow is the weighted average method. Otherwise, it is very difficult to follow first in, first out or last in. Last in, first out is anyway very illogical. But then these are theory, this is a theoretical concept. And you don't have to agree with what the company is doing. But you should have a logic which we should be able to sustain when we talk to the CFOs and the other people. Okay. In this uh, problem, what is the value of the two, 2100 are multiplied by 1.20? The 2100 is how it is come? No, no, this is again, the total inventory was 2100. This are our assumption. See, all the three cases, yeah. the material available here is 2100. Okay. So what I have done, I have taken the same data for the three method to see the difference. Sir, is there any uh, statutory guideline or standards are available in which method has to be adopted? No, there are no guidelines, but all the three methods have been listed out. Okay. Given the cost accountancy, all the three methods are, are listed out and it will all depend upon the type of industry and why you should use, you should have a justification. See, the reason, the role of valuer is exactly where, uh, like National Panasonic case in me, when they were not doing something which is the normal guideline, so a third party is called to put in that manner. Uh, let me give you a very interesting example, not related to inventory, but a different. We, we got the assignment for valuation of Madame Tussaud wax uh, exhibitions, which they have a center in Delhi. So these are wax statues. Any guess what will be the value of the wax statues? In crores. Crores, wax statues. Hmm. Let us say the wax statue of Virat Kohli. How much will it be? Or Deepika Pandukon. These are celebrities. Or Mahatma Gandhi. That is, that is the reason. More than the material, it's the cost of the film. No, it is not film. These are physical statues. You can see them. The height is same, the hair and everything. They don't allow you to touch it, but you can stand close to it and take a picture. 
and uh, they showed me a picture of uh, uh, which one i there was some cricketer i don't remember and it was very difficult to say who was the true the statue was the correct one real one or the actual that cricketer was a real one it is so, so life like asking about the value of the raw materials like wax etc or the value of the finished goods like the value statue itself it see it we, we have to do the value i i was to do the value of these statues now how do i do the value but how is the wax statue considered as inventory Because no, no. This is not related to inventory. Okay. This is purely not related. This is purely related to then, how how the independent valuations have to be done. How value has value, to be done. Then the value would be a function of uh, how much will be the entry charge for that museum, and over how many years will that. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That that will in that case we have to look into the income approach. Sir, it's yes. different. And they were making massive losses. Okay. So the, that value will be the interest in that uh, purchasing uh, interest in the person. It depends upon the popularity of that statue, sir. Yeah. Okay. How do you define popularity? You need a data. Yeah. See, va valuation without a data is an impression. Procurement value. Purchase. Uh, with... Procurement value. They were purchased uh, by their. They, okay. I am giving you those answers because we debated it with with our team also. See, the, they were they were purchased from UK, yeah, from their mother company, from their main investor. So there is a uh, uh, the arms length transaction is not there. Correct. 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 So how do I know whether this is a clean transaction or there is a malefied intention? As a valuer, I have to be clear on that also. Okay. And now now let me tell you how I went about it. and uh, the good thing is it was accepted by the the company the first thing what i did i did research on how much do these statues actually cost and we were able to get a news item from some people in kerala who are making statues between 18 to 20 lakh rupees so there was only a news item I, there was nothing more so at least we got something called 18 to 20 lakh is the cost which somebody has quoted or somebody something has come up the next thing we tried to do was to get import uh, for such type of uh, uh, statues import data and the only company which has imported such a statue was madam to sat their their principal is in london so then again you know uh, the question it came the same that how do we justify it is an online transaction or not then we started doing more and more research and it took us quite some time and then we found out that how these statues are manufactured and costed we were able to get a research paper which was done by a british university for britain but we were able to track it down it took us some time and it took us actually two and a half days for me to track down that and then we were able to see that yes the cost comes to about a sizable value so just for that we that there is a interest the cost of that virat kohli statue was 48 lakh rupees <laughs> now now here how do you how do you judge those things can you judge by a sale of ticket no you cannot because the company is in dire losses can you judge by the raw material cost the total raw material cost is less than 2 lakh rupees <laughs> can you judge by cost of uh, this acha then we also tried to say how much royalty the celebrity is taking rather royalty they said they get uh, request from celebrity to take money and put their statues so it is a reverse way so in fact they had a statue of modi also so it was very interesting <clears throat> so just to again this the reason why i gave that example was that these are the places where the valuer has to do a lot of work yeah, that uh, the work may not be uh, equivalent to the amount of money that you get paid but then for me it is also thrilling and then we have to come up with an independent opinion which we have to also stand scrutiny with other people okay let's continue now inventory of items sent for job work now we all know 
that certain amount of inventory is there when we send the material for job work. Job work means some work which is done by a third party, but cost of material is with us. So firms send material for some specialized work for third party, and the material is the property of the firm, so it is an inventory. Now, as per GST guideline, all the job work, it should be returned within 24, within 12 months of the date of sending. So what we have to do is we have to check the items which has been sent on job work. The way to check is first is take the report from their computer. If nothing else, then on the gate, they will have two registers, one in non-returnable material, other is returnable material. Take the data from the returnable material and <clears throat> then check the outstanding item for the job worker. An inventory will be quantity at the job worker which is whatever is the quantity and rate which is give, to be given to the job worker. So that will be the total. And of course, the uh, cost of the material there. There is a GST form uh, 4.1, which has to be filled when you are doing this inventory. I purposely did not fill it because that would become another uh, topic. Now, so far we have covered inventory of the running items, which are for manufacturing. But there is also inventory of maintenance and other items. Now, how do we treat those inventory? Uh, now, let us take a company like uh, BHEL or NTPC, where the maintenance item inventory may also be very sizable. I know in BHEL, for example, there are machines which are 65, 70 year old. The companies which were manufacturing those machines that do not exist. And they had to buy a lot of material in advance so that, you know, in case they need it for next 25 years. So the inventory of maintenance and other item becomes sizable in such instances. So uh, they, they are not used in production. Now they are a long-term asset. So now these, plus then there are safety items, you know, personal protection, cutting tools, packing material, which are neither maintenance items, which are not production items. So we also have to see inventory of similar items. Now, how do we do? First is we see the base material and we see if there is an expiry date. Now that is very important here. Now for material that will age with time. So fan belt, rubber item, sealant, chemicals. Now these are items which will have a shelf life. Even if the shelf life is not written, they will, what uh, I have used the word age in inverted comma. They will age with time. In a particular company where I had gone, not for valuation for something else, I saw fan belt lying there which were more than 20 years old. So I asked the storekeeper, the owner was with me. I asked the storekeeper, can you give me that belt? He gave me the belt. I just crushed the belt with my, or I, I tightened my wrist. Oh, mutti bandhli is a cat and everything fell out. So I asked the owner, why have you kept item which in your inventory shows full value, but it has zero value. You look at and you can't use it when it happens. So these are value to be reduced as per expiry date or three years. And then you have to take a judgment on all these such items. Then there are second items which are like bearing, gears, fasteners, plugs, and wires. The value should be taken at purchase price. Now, there is something very interesting for metal items and specialized item like this, uh, bearing. Now, there might be a particular bearing which may be lying for 20 years. If you sell, it will sell at a scrap. But if you want to buy it, you will have to pay very, very high cost because those bearings may not exist in the world. Or One bearing may be lying in... Brazil or some other places which, you know, and then he says, okay, I want so much of high price and whatever. So the normal way, my suggestion is that all metal items, you should value at the purchase price, whatever was the old purchase price. An item that will age with time or deteriorate with time, you should keep on reducing till the time three years and then make it zero and take a judgment. Uh, valuation of other items. Other items like personal protection, shoes, uniforms, dresses, and such like that. 
they should be valued at purchase price because these items are generally fast moving. Okay. Any questions so far? And then we move for valuation under insolvency. I hope everybody is enjoying and, and I hope there is at least something, some learning somewhere. <laughs> no, no, we are learning a lot. Sir, I have Sorry. a very, very basic okay. question. Uh, valuation of inventory is supposed to be done by SFA class or plant and machinery class or both of them are allowed to do? What does sir, IBDI guidelines? Sir, okay, I have also covered this part. Okay. In, in the, in the international valuation standard, there is no guideline who is going to value this. Okay, there is no guideline. Now, because there is no guideline, the question is who will value it? So the best part in this is, let's start with construction. For construction, the value of raw material and WIP is best done by land and building. For factories and manufacturing, the maintenance items and the work in progress can be done by plant and machinery. Whereas the both other valuation, the finished good and the raw material can be done by SNF or it can be done by plant and machinery, either of them. But there are no guidelines. What I have what I have done is whenever they want me to value inventory, I have taken that as a special line item in the work order. Sure. Thank you, sir. Does that Thank answer you. the question? Yeah, because I had the confusion because the internationally the uh, inventory is included under the phrase financial assets. Inventory is a financial asset as per IFRS as well as India is. Correct. So that's where the confusion cropped from. No, no, your confusion is very, very genuine and serious. The other big confusion which is going is, how do you value the software? <laughs> okay. So let us now come under inventory under insolvency. Usually there will be nil or very less inventory. And then what we have to do, we have to check whether it can be sold as it is or not. And if it has got any shelf life, which is left and can it be put for any alternate use? And with these, one has to do a fair market value as we do for other assets. So that is the way we do under in, uh, insolvency. Usually commodity gets a good value. Special items get lower value or a scrap value. And expired items may even get a negative value. That means you have to pay to dispose it. Let us say there is a chemical cyanide which are there in a plating plant, which is still left there. Now you can't dispose it off uh, just like this. So it has to be disposed on a safe site with a safe manner. And then you have to pay for it. So uh, when we talk of uh, inventory under insolvency, it is uh, slightly more tricky. Now, there are two examples I have given. Now, let us say there's a surface coating company, like company which is doing plating or painting or something. Now, for normal salts, which they would have, there will be no expiry date, there are no legal provisions, so you get a good value. Then there are special chemicals which may have an expiry date of three years. Yes, there are legal provisions. Yes, that it can be sold, but only to specified firms. And the possible value that you get is good. Uh, a cleaning chemicals uh, where the expiry date may be five to seven years, there are no legal provision and the value that you get is fair value. Uh, another company like print IT company you have printer ink, which have 12 month expiry days, no legal provision, possible value nil, because no, nobody want to take a old printer ink to use it. Or CD, DVDs, you may still have expiry date of three years, there are no legal provisions, but I have got about 20 CDs and DVDs, which, you know, for burning, nobody wants to buy, even if I want to give it for free, people say, nay, nay, we don't want it. So this is just as again, as an example, any question? I hope this will answer some of the question of uh, expiry date and shelf life and so on. In case of the IT company, uh, 
as you have mentioned that printer ink has a no possible value shall we take at the uh, some some person has to take from the particular company and dispose of so dispose of cost is going to be there so it should be a negative value yes it is possible in international valuation standard also says that you can have a negative value in case there is a disposal cost fine thank you sir so and then you have to mention that as a disposal cost so it is negative any other question sir good going sir good going okay now let us take inventory as per indian accounting standard the applicable standard is in as2 and it is very clearly they have said it is not applicable to financial asset and biological asset biological asset they have also added agriculture in this or any live animals so in case uh, like i have seen in one factory of amarwadi where he had a uh, six cows there so they will not be counted as a inventory or a asset both of them <laughs> and to be done at net realizable value or at fair value so one of the, to be done at either of the two so in normally inventory moves very fast so these are both the same but the indian accounting standard says that one of the two has to be done and it has to be done lower at a lower of cost or net realizable value so if you have purchased it at a higher cost and the price has gone down then the net realizable value will come into picture the classic most example on this is the real estate sector during covid uh -huh. where at whereas the total net realizable value has come down drastically because the whole sale price has gone down another thing very interesting again on the real estate is uh, the number of companies wo bas tha to wo ja ek ek khane wala hai ek khane please switch off hello yeah yeah okay the other very interesting case on the realizable value is the work of from home is becoming so common that the commercial property has lost a lot of value and the in the cost or the rental has gone down or is going down tremendously uh there is a very large firm my daughter used to work there called nomura nomura is finance company 300 year old headquartered in japan they are the company which purchased uh, this uh, lemon brothers when it went bankrupt they have decided in japan that 70% of their people in japan are going to work from home and in india they have said up to june 2021 it will be work from home they have huge property in bombay near hiranandani uh, pavai and 50% of the property they are going to rent out so the whole again here the net realizable value today in real estate has gone down so much that uh, you have to now value inventory at that thing then we have to also add rejection wastages as a normal cost then borrowing cost interest to be added wherever applicable which is more into traded good now where it comes into picture in traded good is that companies like uh, hindustan unilever they take advance payment from their distributor and then they give the material and the material the distributor has to give it to the retailer where the retailer pays only when the sale takes place or if it is going to a uh, 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 organized retailer like reliance geo or big bazaar they say that you put the material in the store the cost of putting the material on the shelf is yours the day it sale we will pay you 30 days after that so it's very interesting so if i am hindustan unilever or i am coca cola or i am colgate i have to go and put the material on the shelf after the material is sold 30 days after that i get the payment so so it's very and this is the way the borrowing cost gets added and in indian accounting standard that cost to be added to wherever applicable in these type of cases 
and for finished good cost to sell is to be deducted now cost to sell comes under all of these uh, sales promotions and blah blah whatever we had talked earlier okay now who will value inventory now this is a question which came uh, uh, separate which had come earlier i have also put in this ivs is silent on who will value inventory my suggested approach is that raw material and finished goods should be done by snf maintenance item and wip to be done by plant and machinery and construction item to be done by land and building and in any of the cases inventories have to be mentioned separately it cannot be part of the asset Uh, uh, at all because inventories come under the net current asset and whereas uh, the assets come under assets uh, inventories will not be treated separately in income approach so this is again very clear if you are using income approach you cannot treat inventory separately it is part and parcel of the total thing now how do we put on disclaimer in kvx the suggestions of my my suggestions again here the following to be added the value has to be taken at purchase price or market price whichever is lower the normal sale commission has been considered extra discount sale promotion has not been considered now these things we have to add in the kvat and disclaimers and firm will be running continuously and all material is the sole property of the firm and not under job work uh there are companies which may like to which get material for job work and they say you please value it so you have to write this caveat that you have assumed they are not under job work because then the value goes up they can get more loan and thing like this and for material which is under job work the inventory is the property of the customer so so we have to write this that the material is the sole property of the firm and not under job work we are not bothered that the material just when it has to be paid or whatever now if you went thing another very interesting is raw material can be funded but the raw material or the inventory will never be leased asset are leased inventory is never leased so please be careful if somebody talks in that language any any conclusion and then we can do a question answer or whatever it is so inventory is a sizable value in a running concern i have shown you data this has to be taken in consideration which is we all agree this will also depend on the type of business and fair value is the right way to go about it sir many financial institute uh, gives a loan on our inventory also no i disagree the financial institution give a loan of working capital assuming 3 month inventory they the financial institution divide the loan into two part one is they call is a project loan or a long term loan which goes up to 7 year 10 year depending on the type of company and nature of business the working capital is only for 3 months and for the 3 months you have to have the raw material and finished good total for 3 months if your total uh, plus of course the creditor and debtor total should be 3 months or more then they will give you for 3 months sir i have two questions yes sir the in hello under carp process in irp process okay carp that is whether the inventory has to be valued under cost approach or market approach or the the income income i think it is not possible income is not possible yeah the best way to value inventory is the market approach okay sir actually see if for example some uh, companies may be having uh, thousands of uh, inventory items actually each item how it will be possible of course to no no market, right and impossible all. impossible yeah. Yeah. the best way to do is this the abc approach okay yeah that's all okay okay now the way i suggest to do is yeah. when you have a list of those items let us say 2500 line items yeah now 2500 line items and they in with the company is under cirp not a running firm close for yeah. two years or one year 
in that case all rubber item and chemicals and all such thing you just make it as zero simple okay yeah 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 you you can't you can't go through 2000 you physically you can't check 2500 And if you have to go through each of the two thousand five hundred item, yeah. but at yeah. least I'll go mad. <laughs> that is true. So I will go mad. Ah, correct. De- depending on the type of items and uh, considering the ABC analysis, you can explore the items correct. and the, you can concentrate the important items and according to that you can mix the cost Ab- as well as the market approach. absolutely correct you see when you are doing a valuation for a complete firm you can use a mix approach there is nothing yeah. which is stopping to say don't use mix approach let oh. us take a sugar plant now in a yeah. sugar plant there are many cars and tractors for transportation that you yeah. value on a market approach yeah yeah then the the sugar cane the the some of the molasses they take out mm-hmm. and they give it to their party now the value of the molasses you use income approach so it is absolutely correct you use all the three approaches and in the report you write that you are using this approach and mm-hmm. this is a reason for using this approach okay you can classify pura the ka hi bhi rakhne ji pura kaise you wanted to use absolutely you can explain absolutely you yeah, the, the that is where the valuers uh, real work comes in which approach to use why to use there see so both these two things becomes important okay okay sure thank you uh, a very interesting example was given to me by a land and building valuer they said on a chemical factory they were valuing there were two factories just adjacent to each other but one factory was valued double at the other on the land cost land and building and the reason why they were valued double because in one factory they had permission to dispose the effluents and in the other they did not so the the property where they had permission to dispose effluent they they of course had made ef uh, et uh, uh, effluent treatment plant and so many things par the tangal the but uh, the the whole thing was very big uh, advantage because otherwise there is a huge cost to dispose of those effluents sir sir sorry sir uh, i have question this um a service uh, company where there is no plant and machinery no land and building because the office is taken on lease now there are some office equipments only okay. now can kar de then thodi der mein khatam hone wala sfa valuer can uh, value the office equipments no snf valuer should not value the office equipment <laughs> He okay. should he should take the value from a plant and machinery value. ये paper मतलब है. वो वाला पीली ये ये नहीं बनाया. नहीं. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Consumable and software industry in normal industry software licenses these parts we do some light. sorry i i i was not able to understand you fully in a software industry how do you do valuation yeah, yeah. license license of software which they may be having see as their asset see licensed software there is a lot of discussion going on in the community you may be part of it not i don't know so in licensed software there are two type of software one is where you pay a one time fee and it is yours permanently and the second is where you pay one time fee but you also keep on paying annual fee for upgradations and for updates is correct okay now wherever you are paying the one time fee you have to as take a life of that particular software and then do it for example 
एम एस ऑफिस टू थाउजेंड सेवन दे हैव स्टॉप गिविंग एनी सर्विस एंड द लेटेस्ट सिस्टम विंडो टेन एक्सेट्रा इट इज नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली समटाइम्स इट वर्क समाइम इट डजेंट वर्क सो देर द कॉस्ट should be nearly zero in my opinion that's my opinion but whereas if you take office 365 which is purely on subscription you have to pay per year there you have to take the full value because the software is current at all the time so how do we see the consumables for some stock of consumable may always like grease this type of consumer welding rods see there again it all depends upon the number of the such items let us say grease is only uh, 10 kg grease okay now 10 kg grease would i would typically put it under maintenance item not under uh, a production item if it is a production item where grease is put on for example grease pack bearings or some something where a grease packing has to be done then it will come under the normal material production and finish good and if it is under maintenance then it has to be treated as with the maintenance items then you do the abc as we do in normal assets uh, you know even in factories which are 1000 crore sales the normal grease i have seen is not more than 3 4 type of grease but the total quantity of grease doesn't is not more than 1 kg 2 kg and stuff like that it is the cost of bearings and gears which is the maximum in in mechanical oriented industry in a mechanical pipeline industry yeah pipeline pipeline big come bigger company they will they will hold a lot of welding rods and fillers yes, yes. this type of consumable they are all consumables basically yes these Not are maintenance those. items so welding rod is they go to production sir no the so welding company... welding rod goes there but it's a consumable see consumable now we are consumable. see uh, this pipeline this uh, company is making pipes or this company is running the pipeline like for example it is lnt making pipes Both or it is uh, it is gas authority no that the item will become different for gas authority welding rod will become a maintenance uh, for maintenance for lnt for lnt the welding rod is a is without welding rod you can't make the pipe yes correct correct so we have to treat if it is a like lnt then i say that welding rod is also part of the material which is going in production yeah, process item process item see what you say is correct a normal manufacturing you will have raw material you will have consumable and other but instead of dividing in so many other thing because in this team we have all the three type of value i say anything which is going in the finished product is a raw material for that production whether it is grease or or uh, whatever it is so it's making making life easier and simple that's that's only thing i'm trying to do Sir, is there any thumb rule between the identify between the fair value as well as the liquidation value? Fair value and liquidation value. See, yeah, both. Yeah. See, the fair value is defined when a price is reached between a buyer and a seller, both acting in their own selfish manner. Both act selfish manner means the buyer wants to buy at the cheapest price and seller wants to sell at the highest price. both are not related to each other and the transaction is at arms length arm lengths again mean they are not related to each other in any manner so that is a fair value fair value is also the market value now the liquidation when you talk of liquidation here again the problem what comes in liquidation is that the person who is liquidating liquidating how desperate is he if he is not desperate then he gets close to market value if he is desperate then he gets a scrap value yeah now in uh, in for example in uh, whatever the liquid uh, the uh, 
and the rp ibc cases and all generally what is the inventory value if it is for example about 10 lakhs liquidation value is there any tambro okay about 10 or 20 scrap percent scrap, scrap value. value scrap value. liquidation most is scrap it can be. yes 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 okay i i was doing uh, some it was it was a very comical case uh, i was yeah. doing valuation my fees was only 4000 rupees valuation yeah. for a satellite company satellite uh, you know they were taking a signal from satellite like something like cable tv okay. and they had 20 reams of paper there <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so you know it to me also it was la- very laughable and i asked the ip what are you going to do with this 20 ream of paper he said i don't know what i am going to do because but because i have received it you have to value it he said yes i have to value it <laughs> sir one more question sir. regarding the inspection yeah, yeah. of the inventory how to go about uh, yeah, can we okay. use uh, again ab analysis yeah yeah can, uh, abc only abc please without see when i go to do any inspection first is unless i get a far i don't go for inspection no matter what it is yeah okay number 1 number 2 if the ip says i don't even have the far you have to go and do inspection then i mm. immediately tell him i have to revise my quotation and okay. in my quotation i also write it i have assumed far is available yeah sir okay. yeah hello what has happened uh, mr datta dash you have uh, shared some screen sir sir sorry 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 sir so crp of a jewelry company yes. should inventory be valued at uh, as a jeweler or as a bullion sir ah oh, that's a that's a very interesting question okay normally jewelry valuation comes in as an absolute independent field okay yes. normally yes. now in jewelry there are several part of it the one is what we call is a stone yes diamond and and cat sai and whatever yes <clears throat> okay the second is what is bullion yeah raw okay. gold yeah no raw bullion is very easy that's the market price market value yes yeah but the, the company is in crp ha huh, the company is in crp the bullion the raw bullion is very easy yes the difficult part is the stones yes and whatever the jewelry which is manufactured yes okay now here unless one is a specialist in the stone you cannot value the stone you know frankly if you ask me i cannot tell a difference between a diamond and a glass yes, so yes. how how can i value that okay so you need a specialist uh, for doing that which at least i am not i don't know uh, if there is anybody who is there and ibbi is going to create another class which is two more classes uh, which are being talked about one is for jewelry other is for agriculture and and uh, biological okay. so these two classes are going to come so i need to so take support of some specialists you this. have to take support of some there is and and regarding the jewelry manufactured jewelry Yeah. the way to do it is you you just get it converted into the raw bullion and there are these labs today you know who scratch yes. it and tell you what is the carrot and then it can be done oh thanks sir thank you this is where in kerala or in hyderabad this uh, cr uh, bullion bankruptcy hyderabad <laughs> was hyderabad i have seen that is one that is street there which uh, you know the the size of the showrooms is uh, i don't know how they maintain the showroom hmm. okay sir any any more questions we have last 4 5 minutes left 10 minutes i hope you enjoyed the session i hope there was at least some learning coming out of the session much learning sir very great your experience is shared with us really great opportunity to have a session with you sorry sir thank you sir okay if uh, there is session sir sorry 
it was very good session last sir. went on live is a live session so it went on live also <laughs> yeah, yeah. i i for, for me it is very difficult to speak to a screen so if somebody is speaking from the back or something you know then you feel yes you are connected uh there is just one more question uh which was about uh, how to get the addresses of uh, irps so if you if you are okay then we can do that also in a few minutes okay so let me let me do that also so now i am sharing my browser so here first let me do ippi.gov.in okay now we have the ibbi website now in the ibbi website we have the service provider now in the service provider we see insolvency professional so i click on the insolvency professional <laughs> now in the insolvency professional you can see these are insolvency professional faq regulation apply for registration registered ip and rejection orders so you click on registered ips and then here you have insolvency professional insolvency professional agencies information insolvency professional entities and so on so when we click on insolvency professionals ah huh, what happened here so here you can see the list of all insolvency professionals <clears throat> so here uh, mr devinder singh mr satyan nath kanor korania from rajasthan mr vikram bajaj delhi mr vishal rai delhi sachin sapra delhi and so on so here you can see the ips which are there uh what my suggestion here is now here if you see question number 11 mr dinkar trivanam danpuram i am sorry i am not able to even pronounce this he is from ernest and young llp from gurga so you know these are these ips which are there so my suggestion here is you can write to these ip and you have their email addresses also you can write to these in ips which are about 3 to 400 km from your base station because normally they will not uh, give any order which are more than 2 300 km so all the orders which i have received they are only for 20 30 40 km from where i am based so any questions on this sir now that you have seen how to get the ip addresses no sir thank you okay because there were some questions that how to get the ip addresses and so on so that is how i was i was showing you that thank also you. okay sir any other last questions anything else or or shall we uh, close it out Sir, can you uh, uh, please uh, forward your this uh, PPT through our uh, organizer? Okay. Put it in the WhatsApp, please. See, regarding the PPT, uh, let Divya Jyoti Foundation take that lead on sending and all because uh, they they have all the emails and everything. Yes, sir. So, so that is the best. As far as I am concerned, this uh, is available. that is not a problem uh, mm -hmm. i'll give you my email uh, email is uh, uh, here but i'll give you my telephone number which is 9873592082 uh, s k agarwal 9873592082 
and my request is to contact me first on whatsapp you know if you call me you may find my phone to be switched off like it is now or i don't give a reply or cut off but if you give a whatsapp you know with a little brief then i will definitely give you a response sir where where you are based i am based in gurgaon okay. sir you are your three in one uh, value sir no 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 i am purely plant and machinery only sir i am not three in one there is only one three in one valuer in baroda mr r k patel thank you sir but okay see the the way things are moving the way see i am also taking some classes and uh, whatever we are able to talk to ibbi actually ibbi is a lot more worried about that the number of people who are clearing exam is very very less see uh, the intention of the government is that uh, they want to stop non ibbi valuers altogether but uh, at least there should be 30 40000 uh, us valuers but at this time there are only 3900 or 2800 and there are 1 lakh valuer of different so if they stop the other valuer the total work in the country will stop yeah. so let us see there are there are some some more things going on in the sense there some people who are writing to the finance minister saying that uh, the no. bank should automatically register no. the ibbi no. why should there be a registration no. process and uh, the income tax 34 ab should also be automatically open to ibbi registered valuer so a lot of those pressure points are going on uh, unfortunately none of the rbo is doing anything to help out uh, iov rvf has got larger number of valuers which are not ibbi uh, and the head of uh, iov rvf uh, mr goel he is a valuer but he is not a ibbi registered value or he is an architect a very nice gentleman so that is what the life is today okay any last question before we call off it is 230 sunday 230 is a tough day <laughs> okay sir thank you agarwal sir thank you okay, to all thank our you. participants Ah, Sarita ji is there. Sarita ji is the CEO for uh, Divya Jyoti. So she is here. Yeah, right. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Thank, sir. thank you to Divya Jyoti also to for organizing this session. Thank you. And uh, please do give your feedback to Divya Jyoti how good or bad I was so that we can all improve. Okay, and okay. Sarita ji, I will send my PPT to you as usual, and then you can take care in whichever way, right way. Ah, okay, sir. We will send all the all our participants your PPT. Right. Thank you, thank you madam. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, also include his mail ID. Also include Mr. Agarwal's mail ID. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will, I will put it on the PPT. I will put it on the PPT. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mail ID will be in the IBB website also. Yes, yes, it is there in IBB oh. website. My phone number is also there. <laughs> Hello.